now my pleasure to introduce to the stage Nicole Foster, the Global Director for AI ML Public Policy at Amazon Web Services. Um, thank you so much for having me with you here today. Merci de m'avoir invité ici aujourd'hui. C'est un plaisir d'être ici avec vous en personne de Toronto. Um, artificial intelligence has the potential to be truly transformational, um, tackling some of humanity's most challenging problems, augmenting human performance, and maximizing productivity. And women are already playing a central role in the development of artificial intelligence and harnessing it for social impact. So I'm thrilled that as part of this evening's event, we'll be hearing from a number of women who are already pioneers and leaders. Nicole, lovely to see you again. Welcome to the show and welcome to our audience today. Could you tell us a bit more about your role at AWS? Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Um, I, I lead our artificial intelligence pu public policy for, for AWS. Fantastic. And we're here today, a very special event in Brussels, very much looking at well AI diversity in the sector and you know, how we can enhance this ecosystem. Why does that matter so much to you? Well, it, it matters to me on a personal level, but, but um, in addition to that, it's, it's good for science and it's good for business. So we know that diversity in teams make for better creative outcomes, better Absolutely. decision making, but it's also just the right thing to do. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. I think shared value business models, so to speak, is a way to go. And you're right, all the research teams are more creative, satisfied, innovative if you've got that diversity and it reduces that risk of implicit bias as well. So wonderful stuff. So I know at AWS you're doing a lot at the moment to really support diversity in, in and talent pipelines as well, frankly. Can you tell us mm -hmm. more about some of those programs? So, I mean, we have so many education yep. programs that really sort of are looking at STEM education for different types of learners at different different stages of their learning journey and, and also, you know, how they how people want to learn. But specifically, um, and so broadly, we've announced $50 million to, to train 29 million people by 2025. Mm -hmm. But specifically, we have some um, targeting both at young female learners. But one of the great programs um, that we're excited to talk about this week is AIM High. And AIM High is, we have other programs for startups and for founders, but this one specifically supports women and the challenges that they have in finding, founding a new business. So around how you mitigate bias in fundraising and asking for money. And it really sort of addresses those specific challenges that women have. I love that. AIM High, you heard it here first that's fantastic that's brilliant stuff and funnily enough I spoke to a lady who had gone through your restart program as well and that yes. transformational experience of her life and she got like her first cloud architect role for example so I love the fact you're doing that for AI like here today but also around cloud skills as well which I think is amazing um, and what else would you recommend to people you know for a moment who might be sitting here thinking do you know what I'd like to do a career in tech but I'm not sure do I apply for one of these programs you know, click to commit you know that kind of thing I want to kind of encourage people to say yes I can do this what would your message be well I, I think definitely give it a go. I mean, yep. you, you don't have much to learn. And I'm, I mean, I'm somebody who didn't come from a technical background at all. I you know, exactly. came from a sort of liberal arts education. Um, and there really is sort of a diversity of different ways that you can kind of come into artificial intelligence. So there's, you know, we, we need lawyers, we need public policy people, we need people who do marketing. So there's lots of ways that you can get um, your foot into this industry without being a technical expert. But the cloud is also democratizing access to AI so, so you don't need to be a machine learner a learning practitioner you can be um, you know a developer and apply some of the tools in the cloud um, and deploy it quickly I love that and it kind of springs to mind I talk about steam a lot so going beyond the stem to steam learning I'm very passionate about that and I think that's so true I think sometimes there's a misconception that you know every particular tech role has to be incredibly heavy tech if you yeah. see what I mean and so many teams need a whole diversity of skills so it's so important to kind of bring that holistic message to what skills make a difference and you touched on startups here as well mm -hmm. I know today we're going to see a lot of really, really empowering AI startups founded by women so again what are you doing there around the startup um, ecosystems again I know you're doing a lot of work around that too so, I mean, I spoke about AIM High, which is broadly targeted at women, but we also have a program called Activate. It's one of my favorite Fantastic. programs that we, that we have, and that really sort of helps those, those you know, sort of early stage startups. Um, they get access to $100,000 in cloud credits and great mentorship and coaching um, from our team who are themselves former founders or from VCs, um, as well as solution architect time. So they also get access to technical support um, in, as they're building, and it's really sort of got that depth of technical support um, in addition to sort of the other business support that you need. 
That's amazing. And what we'll do as well, for everyone listening, we'll share all the details about these different programs. Also some role models in tech I've been interviewing as well, like your good self, a kind of this living wall of people so you can say, hey, do you know what? I could do that too. Like, that's so, so important. And I'll ask one final question, if yeah. I may. So if we were able to come back to this like, discussion like this time next year, for example, if there could be one thing that you would hope to have changed over that year, what would that be? What would that look like for you? Well, I think that this technology has the power to really be transformational and change so many parts of, you know, the economy, but also, you know, our healthcare systems and the environment. And women absolutely have to be part of that change to make sure that we get that change right. So um, what I would want to see is just that next time when we do this event in a year or two, that we um, just, we're, we're sort of swatting, swatting participants away, that we have so many potential speakers, um, instead of sort of having to, to dig hard to find the right ones. I love that, have it queuing out the door. Oh, absolutely. Exactly, exactly, that's brilliant. <laughs> Honestly, Nicole, delighted to speak to you. I'm looking forward to your talk later on this evening as well. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining, and for everybody watching too, thanks so much. Thank you.